was never easy against Florida State, it seems. What, what was the key tonight? Um, out of here with a win? Yeah, I think Reese Beekman and Isaac McNeely were terrific tonight. And I thought Rhodey was really good. Everyone had their moments, um, and we made plays. Um, our defense had stretches where it was solid, but it wasn't sharp enough. Um, we fouled a lot. They got to the paint, and that was at the end. You could tell, put your head down and drive, and we didn't have much resistance, and we had some, some breakdowns defensively that <coughs> we're going to have to clean up. But I thought those guys making such – such timely shots and plays and the way Florida State guards you, you know, they, we know that they switch. So you get the five on the one, you have to touch the paint. And I thought in the second half we had stretches of real good offense and then we had stretches of real good individual playmaking and that, that was enough tonight, barely. Okay, we'll take one in the back and then break. Uh, Isaac McNeely, man, uh, what a game he had. 29 points, uh, five for seven from three-point land. Um, I just wanted to ask how, how good is it seeing you get more involved in the offense? Yeah, uh, he was... He's, you know, he's only in his second year, and he's he's getting more assertive and looking for a shot. Has deep range, but I liked that he put it on the deck a little more, which you have to. And um, he's having a heck of a year, and, and he's, um, you know, he's a good one. And I thought that was tonight. He's had a few coming out parties, but tonight he was he was really good in terms of showing um, what he could do in big time spots. Okay, Greg, and then Jeff. So yeah, Reese driving the ball tonight was that part of the game plan, knowing that that you need. Drive to get the clean look yeah, in all of the years, you know, I've coached against Coach Hamilton, and <coughs> excuse me, throw water anywhere. <coughs> Thank you. Um, choked me up. I tell you what, <laughs> Reese driving so well. <coughs> excuse me. Um, you have to because you get the one on the five switches. They're overplaying on the wings. The court's a little bit open, so you have to punch it off the dribble and go. And again, Andrew had to do it. Uh, Isaac had to do it, and of course. Reese was good. Dante did it a couple times and drew and kick and made some plays. So it was really important. And again, it's a game that forces you to make plays off the dribble. And sometimes you can get movement and slips and different actions that you use. But uh, at some point in the game, it's going to be, um, it's going to have to be some playmaking off the dribble. Okay, Jeff. I think Florida State. <clears throat> oh, okay, cool. Is that okay? It's the best, is that we, a, it's best we got. Is that a bourbon or is that a? No, a, it's, a it's, the, just it's a dark, yeah, a brown, a brown ale, right. New, <laughs> Newcastle. <laughs> Florida State. First beer my, my wife got me to drink was in Newcastle, one of my first beers. <laughs> uh, I think they were on a 9-0 run, made it a two-point game, and then Jake hit that shot from the left corner, kind of separated a little bit. I know I'm yeah. going to ask this after yeah. every game recently, but what has his emergence meant for the team? Huge. Uh, I want to give credit to Coach Sanchez. He he gave us an action. He kind of whispered me, I think this is a time we could use an action, and we got – two timely baskets off of it. So credit him. But, and, of course, Jake um, hitting that shot, and it set up some other stuff. So it was really good. But Jake, you know, timely. You talk about timely threes. Isaac's three that we needed because we were leaking oil. Um, and then in that run, I think they cut it to two, right? <clears throat> and then we used that, that action, and Jake hit a huge three. And then we got a play or two later, a nice slip at the rim. So. Okay. Greg, and then Jeff again. Just Isaac's free throw shooting there in the, in the last, you know, 15 seconds, 12 seconds. Expect that from him. He's been a good yeah. No, we needed it. Yeah, I know Reese was discouraged. He missed two, which he doesn't usually, but he was, you know, he, he did. But Isaac uh, was really clutch from all parts of the floor shooting the ball tonight. Now that you're at the end of it, how did the seven Saturdays in a row away from home test your team, and how do you think it grew over that span? Because it started with the Notre Dame game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's the Saturdays away. It's our seventh straight one. I just think it's – us growing up and finding ways and settling a little more on a rotation, um, guys improving their game. Uh, again, tonight was, um, and I'll watch the film, I shouldn't, I, I felt like we've really been coming defensively, and tonight that didn't feel as, as good credit to Florida State, the way they can make some plays and, and attack it. Uh, but, you know, lively crowd. We've played in some pretty aggressive or loud uh, arenas, and Saturday's usually the, the circled game. So, being in that setting is important, and you know. But every game now, we're, we're playing to you know just be in the hunt and keep qualifying for the good stuff. And uh, I think it it's we have matured, but still got a ways to go. Okay, Greg. I, I was going to say that <clears throat> to win in this setting, uh, what's it mean for, for, for the team to, to have a hard fought down to the wire 
Um, yep. Wins like that, what does it do for you guys going forward? I think it's good. I mean, again, the thing about college sports, but college basketball, I, I don't want to say start over, but every game, every practice, you begin again. That's what you start, and you can't ever guarantee, oh, we're going to have it. We played terrific defense against Miami. Okay, that defense is going to show up. Well, it didn't show up the way it did against Miami. And thankfully, guys showed up in our offense. Showed up. So you just never, you just reestablish. You don't get too high after a win or too down after a loss. You just keep, as we say, you just keep chipping away and, um, and growing. And, you know, you can learn in defeat, but it's nice to learn in victory too. Okay, one in the middle. <clears throat> There's been a lot of talk this year, and maybe more than previous years, about some of the net rankings and how that's impacting conference bids. And you know, you hear, I'm sure you try to block out the noise of the bracketology, but a league like the ACC right now is projected for three, maybe four teams in, when it seems like there's more than four NCAA tournament quality teams. Is, is that, is scheduling and net stuff something that in the off season as a staff, y'all try to think about to plan for? Yeah, I think when it's too soon yet, everybody's, they, they cast, the, oh, it happens early, these are the teams in. You can't project who's in early in the season. You're looking at leagues, you know, they, it changes, and the net is not everything. When they get behind closed doors, there's basketball people, I hope they understand what's going on. There's not a huge separation between leagues. You know, I used to say, oh, the ACC is the best. You know, that's what they said. Well, I was in the Pac-10 at the time. Pac-10 was awfully good. When the ACC is great, it's great, okay? But you're looking at all these leagues, and there's not a lot of separation between the leagues. And when you look at this and you can see a Clemson going to Carolina and Georgia Tech and all that, and then look around, it's happening. So the net... That, I think that it's, it's too soon, it's too early to say that. There's still ball left, and the ACC can compete with every league. They're all pretty close, and that's the reality of it. And I know everybody likes to look at the numbers, say this and that, but um, it showed that in the tournament <clears throat> the last few years, and I think too soon to be um, casting the die saying three teams, four teams, two teams. I mean, that again, look where our team is going, and there's other teams too like that. All right, thanks, Tony. Love Reese and Isaac outside the locker room. Wow.